The next thing you're going to need to make is a motor mount. We've gone through a lot of research and development on this, and we found the perfect material to make it out of. Aluminum. We could have bought some nice aluminum, but instead, here in Brooklyn at the Brooklyn Aerodrome, we just went and garbage picked this ladder. As you can see, we've already made a motor mount out of this, but we'll show you how to make one for your mount. I'm sure some of you guys out there have CNC cutters, or all sorts of fancy stuff, or live next to McMaster and Carr, but here in Brooklyn, we just found what we could at hand. And, speaking of at hand, a hand tool to make the motor mount. Hacksaw. We'll demonstrate. You eyeball two fingers worth of motor mount, technical unit of measure at the Brooklyn Aerodrome. Ah, and this is where the cursing ensues. Gotta be a better way. And when I'm done, there, a motor mount. Eureka! Huzzah! Break time. Just before you use the power tools again. So we need to get holes in this motor mount so we can mount this motor ring to it. It's going to go on something like that. So I'm just going to put this on the edge here and just start drilling holes through with this sort of centered on the short side of the... Um, The thing about aluminum, it's really soft, so it's very easy to work. I'm just going to set up the pilot holes for these. Next, we need to induce an exact 87.3 degree bend into our motor mount that we had just drilled using the precision technology of a pair of vise grips and human perception. Attach Mr. Vise Grip to one end and then apply pressure, Arr! grunting, sipping, more pressure, Arr! yeah, a little more. Arr! Perfect. now induce the 87.3 degree bend into the motor mount so that we can attach it to the towel. The next step is drilling the holes for the twist ties that will hold it to the deck. And that's very simple. There's just four of these. They don't need to be particularly precise. Just four holes spaced out well. While Splinter is finishing the motor mount out, we'll start the process of figuring out how to get the servos attached to the um, deck. This is a very simple process by which you take the servo, and you see a detailed picture of this, and you nestle the corner of the servo at the edge of the prop area, and we use twist ties to actually attach the servo to the airframe. Using a small screwdriver, punch holes through the coroplast. It's extremely effective, it turns out. Okay, voila, we have an attached flange, and uh, all we need to do is drill one more hole in the back of the flange so we can uh, mount the motor on it, but that will be done in a little while. And Rex is doing a wonderful job with our attaching our servos. So basically, we're gonna put the servo up in the corner here. This is the placement of it, and I've pushed a, punched a hole through here and here, and you can see where the like twist tie is. And then we're just going to take this around and run it through as the means of attaching the servo to the deck. And this has turned out to be a very robust attachment method that's fast. It really super duper works well. Try to keep the zip tie um, bindy part away from the servo horn. And also have the back of the servo um, or where the, the lead, where the arm comes out towards the back as well. If we want as short as we want as we can uh, push rods. 
And then the next one of the twist ties goes perpendicular to this one. This one's kind of close to the edge, but it'll work fine, believe me. We've punched a hole there. I'm going to be holding my servo down. And this just goes through to the other side, punch through the hole I made. Even though it's close to the edge, it's really not going to matter. The servos don't see that much force. And then I just zip that through. And voila, we have a nice little servo mount. And this will go to the receiver. All right, now we'll do the other side. Uh, where's that servo? So again, we're taking the servo, arm to the back. The corner of the servo is nestled in the corner of the, uh, of the opening for the prop. That's your alignment. And I'm gonna punch holes, four of them to be exact. We go, two attached servos. Beautiful. It's starting to look like an airplane, eh? And like we said, we're gonna drill a hole in the motor mount through the flange so that the back of the motor does not bind up on the aluminum of the motor mount. There you go. Now that you've drilled the hole in the motor mount, you put the, the uh, motor into it. Uh, again, you want to make sure you have an idea of where the cabling is on the motor because it can be anywhere in this throw. Um, you generally want to have it go to a side so that when, you, when it's, once it's mounted, you have an easy time of moving this cable around. If it's mounted on the top, it would be difficult to, uh, difficult to wire it anywhere. So now that we have our motor mount, we're going to put the motor into the flange, get a nice angle there and push it through, there it is, mounted on. And then we take the hex wrench and tighten the motor into the motor mount flange. Okay. <clears throat> now that we have our motor mount and our motor on the mount, sounds like a religious experience. Um, we want to put it on the plane. And using your fine scientific knowledge of placement of aerodynamics and all of the time you spent in college and university doing this, you make your line on the deck, take your motor mount, line it up in the middle, eyeball it, pretty much guess it's in the middle, and then you make some holes. And voila, <clears throat> now it really started to look like an airplane. <laughs>